everybody. Welcome back to another Floxy, Floxy Live. Today we're going to be talking to the sisters of R. Maryanko. I'm so excited to chat with them again. It was so nice to talk to Yaks last time. I'm excited to meet her sister. So let me go ahead and, and add them. All right. Hey! Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Doing good, thanks. Hi! Hey, how are you? <laughs> I love this. Now I'm missing my sister, dang it. Oh. <laughs> how are you ladies today? We're doing good. Yeah, we made it inside this time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That stuff was fun too, it was fine. Yeah. <laughs> But it's, it's nice to see like, your background of amazing yarn and the amazing colorways that you guys create, which is great. Um, I'm you. so excited. Um, should we go ahead and, and start? Of course, yeah. yes. All right. Can you introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Mm -hmm. Oh, this is, I'm Harumi. I'm, uh, I'm the expert tag person. <laughs> 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 and... Um, uh, that, that's really my job. <laughs> I also try to keep her organized a little bit, you know, and an artist's mind is always all over the place. So trying to like, you know, make sure that there's, 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 a, there's some organization there. <laughs> yeah. And then I am uh, Yax and I am the head diary for RMO Yarnco. And um, we're just really happy to be able to talk to you today. Yeah, me too. Um, I was so bummed that you couldn't join us for Pop Art Glam. I was so excited for everything. And um, just a curiosity for me, are those colors coming back for when for when you come back and join us? Or yes. Those... Okay, cool. So we're having those colors and we'll have them available on our website. And then we also uh, created three new colors just for the fairy tale. Ooh. <laughs> Perfect. Because I was I was so bummed. I was like, dang it, I really wanted, you know, two or three of your colors because the ones that you showed when we talked were amazing and beautiful. And I just I couldn't wait to get my hands on them. So that was that's for me. That's that's my <laughs> best. everything else is like okay, but like I wanted to know because I really wanted that's them. <laughs> that's how I feel about all her colors. Like right? she's like, what did you, what do you think about this? I'm like, oh, that looks like something I need to add to my stash. <laughs> like yes, yes, Could just go ahead, do that. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about your knitting journey or your fiber journey? Sure. Um, mine started by well, hers is a little different than mine. Um, mm -hmm. I know my mom taught her how to knit when. You know, she was younger. I tried, but I was very impatient. So the most I, the most I, I was able to do was do like the the um, the long tail cast on. I think I just liked the movement, so yeah. I could do that for for like mm -hmm. hours. And I think my mom was just happy that you know to keep me like calm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then it wasn't until I was um, in college when one of my um, uh, friends uh, taught me. How to crochet someone had taught her how to crochet and nice. you know i had a little hook and, and yarn and like all right let's learn let's learn this and so i wanted my first project to be a baby blanket for my soon-to-be nephew at the time nice. but you know time goes by and that <laughs> that blanket ended up being like a little scarf for me uh. <laughs> <I just, laughs> it was never gonna happen <laughs> um it was it was like really thin yarn you really don't know anything you know about yarn when you're first like starting out yeah um from there i taught my sister how to crochet because she's like oh that looks interesting that looks fun and so we went and did that and then uh, eventually we picked up knitting and then trying to find uh, the same style that my mom what did so continental style so looking for for stores and then you discover like oh my gosh there's like knitting stores and like mm -hmm. yarn stores yeah. everywhere like what is this so then it was like opened up an entirely new world for us yeah. you know it was it was pretty amazing awesome um what what's your favorite thing to knit and what's your favorite thing to crochet because i know um i'm learning because now i'm a baby crocheter that they're completely <laughs> different Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> shawls have always been our thing like we don't wear shawls we actually <laughs> rarely wear our, our own creations um what? but <laughs> we do it we used to do it for a lot for my mom mm -hmm. and uh my oldest sister she loves wearing our stuff so 
you know, she, she's like our, our little doll, yeah. you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll, <laughs> we're like, oh, this, this, this poncho looks cool, or this, this shawl looks amazing, like, let's, let's try it on you. you we know? automatically say, what color do you think she'd like? I know. <laughs> you know you have to, like, guess who it's going to be for. Yeah. So that, we, we, we like shawls. I think it's, it's the construction. It's the fact that you kind of have a little bit of instant gratification. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, wraps still not our thing because it just seems like a really long <laughs> scarf or blanket. <laughs> we don't use the W word here. No, yeah. <laughs> shawl is our thing. So shawls are are a big thing. She, I know she likes um, making a lot of crochet hats mm -hmm. and top down because it gives you that ability to like control it, mm -hmm. um, make sure that you don't end up with like a hat that like ends up <laughs> super tight. <laughs> so and then she has her own like little pattern going on that she you know tested and tried so that it, it it fits almost every kind of yarn and just this the math that goes involved in, into it it's pretty is amazing. that the one that's written on the napkins uh that one started on a oh, napkin but no no the, that's a shawl uh, oh, oh that's a napkin, napkin shawl yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's what you're gonna call it yeah. <laughs> you know, yes please <laughs> call it semilleta por favor <laughs> Yeah, that's going to be the name. And now it's here, so we'll never forget it. Yeah, there you go. Forget it. <laughs> Love that. Oh, that makes me so happy. Um, what's been going on since the last time we spoke? Um, well, we got three new colors, um, which we're, you know, so excited about. Um, I'm excited about because I get to work with them. <laughs> Um, you know, and just trying to keep busy planning out for next year, mm -hmm. you know, definitely it's like what's coming up shows that we want to that we were invited to shows that we want to try and um, like showcase our or her talent. Um, talent. So my, you yeah, see my, 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 my tags. <laughs> yeah, those are awesome tags. <laughs> um, so, 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 yeah, so just tagger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Official tagger. Official <laughs> yes. Uh, have you guys ever thought of doing like um, an advent or anything? I mean, selfishly asking for myself. <laughs> <laughs> we have, we have thought about doing something like that. Maybe um, we've thought about doing something maybe for like end of the year, mm -hmm. or maybe even something for like Dia de los Muertos. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. it's, I think it's a little more closer to us, um, closer to what we like, and so. But it, it, it does take a lot of planning. So we're we're kind of like the spontaneity ideas, like yeah, let's do this and we can do this and all this stuff. And then when you sit down and you know burst your own bubble, yeah. um, you're like, yeah, that's that's a lot of work. in like two weeks. <laughs> so. I feel that's how my sister and I are as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, hopefully um, later down the road, definitely planning things out and mm -hmm. and and. You know, we have a lot. You should we'll have a lot of creative ideas, and um, hopefully, some of them come to fruition. Yeah. And it's been a, a whirlwind uh, for this year. We um, have been just dying, and you know, kind of going with the flow. But um, every January, we sit down and have like a a planning session for the rest of the year. Of course, we plan like twenty, thirty projects or things that we want to do, and we end up doing like half of that. But yeah, it's definitely in the works. But that's good though, because if you ever you know, like, just, you can always go back and be like, oh, remember when we thought about this? Yes. Do this now because we have time. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. We, oh, we write everything down now. <laughs> <laughs> Not a napkin. <laughs> Not a napkin. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, there you are. You have your stack of napkins with you. <laughs> no, she means business. It's all like in notebooks and electronic right. versions so we can access it anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can lose a napkin as soon as it gets wet. <laughs> so i did um look on your website and i saw you're gonna have a yarn uh you're gonna have your yarn in a shop in puerto rico how yes. how did that happen that was part of um hh americas uh when we were there in june <laughs> and um kuka approached us and she was interested in uh our silk base mm -hmm. and so we um yeah we prepared it for her and um she uh she wanted uh, late delivery so like we're happy that she will yeah. be getting it soon yeah awesome um mm -hmm. any exclusive colorways for her um yeah. where is no, her shop chose... specifically in puerto rico um, um no she chose some of the colors that we had there we had um 
oh, there, our samples are all over the place, but we had a few shawls that she liked the colorways there. And so she was like, I want those colors. I want the patterns. Like she wanted all the details and, oh, here's one. Oh, um, perfect. So it's like colorways for Exordium. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. And this is in our Noviembre base, um, I'm sorry, colorway and Orquilla de Ensueño. So or she chose or this. Orquilla de Ensueño? Mm-hmm. Okay, just making sure I heard you correctly. Yeah. It's gorgeous. And it's a, it's a really nice pattern and Rue, is very quick at knitting so she finished mm -hmm. it in like four days also we, we were on a crunch we were on a time crunch because we wanted to get all these models in and we're like yeah we're gonna get all of these patterns done for for june aside from planning everything else you know and it was our first show um but yeah she was just like okay i'll knit it up and she did a whole bunch of uh of uh, knitting that i don't recommend it in four days but it's totally <laughs> doable I mean, I'm just, my mind is blown that you can knit in four days a yeah. giant shawl like that. Yeah. <laughs> very impressive. Thanks. So well, it kind of helps that I don't weave my own ends or don't block. That's true. <laughs> I just knit. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> who weaves in the ends and who blocks? She does. <laughs> you do. So you're I do and, my, and our other sister, Karina. Yes, well. <laughs> That's so funny. I wish I could. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, my sister to leave. Right? It's a no-go. It's a no-go. <laughs> I think it's a good trade-off, you know? But she does yeah. all the knitting, and then I'm like, okay, I can do this. <laughs> As I cry. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, what is the colorway and the pattern? It's gorgeous. Um, This one, the brown one, or the brown tones, is Noviembre. Mm -hmm, which translates to November. Mm -hmm. And then this one is Orquídea de Ensueño. And um, the other one is Orchids of Dreams? Dreams of the Orchid? Dreaming of Orchid. Yeah. And what is the pattern? This is called Exordium by Rebecca Pickle. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm like, let me make a note of that and... Yeah. Uh, can you... It was Rebecca. Are you... I was thinking of Pink Lenarda. This was color that she um, chooses. Okay, I'll, uh, once we're done with the live, I'm going to go try to find the, uh, the pattern and share it to our stories as well. Um, okay. And, and link to it because it is gorgeous. And you said it is knitting, correct? It is yes. knitting, yes. Because mm -hmm. I know that you guys knit and crochet, so I'm like, which yeah. one? Is yeah. <laughs> we have, uh, I'll, I'll bring on that um, crochet shawl that I was talking to you last time. Oh, yes, please do. So excited. Did you finish your shawl that you were working on last time? Which one was that one? Oh. I don't Love know. She was, she, was, she, was knit, she was knitting like, oh. the, the Floxy colorways. Yeah, and... this one right here. I have not finished it. Okay. <laughs> Life has gotten busy, but I'm already at the border, so that's nice. That's gorgeous. You just have yeah. the border left? Yes, I just have the border. I think I'm three rows into like 20 something, so it's Dang. totally doable. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. Uh, it's gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah, I really like how it's coming out. Yeah. And then this is the Go crocheted ahead. one. Ooh, is that cables? Crochet? Yes. <gasps> yes. What? That's she crazy. called. Yeah. She called dibs on this before I had a chance. By the way, <laughs> I want to point this out. Uh, <laughs> on both the crochet shawls that she did this year, they're gorgeous. Um, but yes, I mean, they're just amazing. So, so what do you mean she called dibs? Do you guys like knit and it's like a communal thing and then whoever calls yes, dibs? Yeah. <gasps> what we do, what we do. So this is, this is what happens in January. So I have to get ready for calling you dibs. Uh, we look through the patterns and like, oh, you know, we have our favorites list. So it's like, okay, yeah. what do we want to do this year? Oh, this would look nice. <laughs> These colors that we have, or maybe if we make a new color. And so we, we started putting them down in our little lovely spreadsheet. And then it's like, okay, which ones are we going to do? Which ones are we not going to do? Yeah. And so she'll be like, dibs and dibs. And I'm like, oh, no. You know, so <laughs> that's, that's, how, that's how we determine who's going to be working out on which project and such. Uh, Some of them we, we both really want to do. So mm -hmm. we'll do our own versions. Yeah. But um, so yes. right now it's, it's just like. Um, I love that. Yeah. What, and what, what else have you done that you've done, you've each done? And that well, the versions of Lemon Tree. My Lemon Tree. Uh, <laughs> He's closer to being finished. 
Yes, I love that. See, my sister and I do the same thing where we like knit the same thing in different colors and it's always great to see like yeah. your mm -hmm. sister's version versus like your version because like her and I, I don't know <laughs> what you guys are, but our color palettes are completely different. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's really awesome. I love that. I love that you guys do that too. Yes. I think our first one that we ever did like that was called The Rock Island okay. by Jared Flood. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gorgeous pattern. Um, the lace, it was, it was our very first complicated lace. And it's, it's a really interesting pattern. You start by knitting the, the border, which is then applied on the shawl. And then you work it from the bottom up. So you actually tackle those rows of lace in the very beginning. And it's, it's a beautiful pattern, very complex. So we would sit down at night, shut everything down. <laughs> and like work an entire row together. And so when one of us would mess up, it's like, <laughs> it's yeah, like, I feel what like... did I do? You know, <laughs> so trying to work on it and everything. And it's a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous shawl. Like you mentioned, different color palettes. So it's really nice mm -hmm. seeing it in, in, in different ones, so. That's yeah. funny. That's that's me with brioche yaks. I'm like, my sister, oh, yeah. no problem. I'm over here like, um, help me what did i do <laughs> your eyes and she, like, dropped it <laughs> gone and i'm like uh. <laughs> yeah she always helps me especially because I, I will put a project down and just do a whole bunch of other things and then yeah. i'm like i didn't write down where i'm at if you could just assist me with this and yeah you know, but she does she's very good at like pinpointing where i went wrong <laughs> yep that's my thing too <laughs> Um, all right. What is, what are your favorite fairy tales? Oh, Ooh. well, my mom, um, was really big on Disney. So like we grew up watching all the movies, but then yeah. she would also, um, buy us, um, in, in, uh, in Spanish, a lot of, um, just fairy tales or, or stories, or she was always trying to stimulate our imaginations, I think. Mm -hmm. And, um, but most of the ones we grew up with were like all the Disney, so like the princesses and, uh, um, Sleepy Beauty. Uh, yeah, like, like Alice in Wonderland oh, was gosh, just yes. like, it's, I know it's one of her favorites, and it's just like so much going on, like so many characters. It's just, yeah. 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 Oh, well, mm -hmm. <laughs> the colors, yeah. Um, what is your ideal color, fairy tale color palette? For me, it's a mixture of like dark and light. And mm -hmm. I think you'll see that reflected in the, the three the colors. Three colors, we yeah. Have. Um, Do you have them with you? Can you share with oh, them? Yeah. Try to keep sure. them separate. Ooh, okay. <gasps> we have Grillo. Okay. And then we have Girasol. <gasps> which is sunflower. That's, yeah. And then it's Espectro. <gasps> yeah, because how do you do this with these amazing colors? I don't understand. <laughs> It was kind of like a like a little story, you know. This represents the the darkness of the of the forest, mm -hmm. and then the flora. the flora of the forest, and then this is just like a lot of color, like really magic. magic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that. I love that. That's so cool, girl. It's really amazing seeing her like in her craft. <laughs> like if you've ever experienced like when you go and see a chef, right? And yes. like they're they're doing their own thing. It's like just seeing her like. You have absolutely no clue what's going on. Yeah. You know, like a magic show. Like, yeah, I, I wonder where this is going. And she's just like throwing colors <laughs> in there. And she talks about this. And I'm like, sure, whatever. Like, And then this beautiful thing just comes up because it looks different when, yeah. when it's being dyed up. And you're like, okay, great. Like, I want more of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, I love that. That's, that's so special that you get to see your sister create like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what are the differences that you find between American fairy tales and Latin slash Hispanic ones? I think probably the endings. Um, uh, the Spanish ones sometimes don't have the, the happiest endings. Mm -hmm. um, and here we're just kind of used to, you know, like, oh, yeah, happily ever after. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's it's more based also, like, on, on legends mm -hmm. and, like, yeah. there's also a of, like, moral you know, story or, or purpose to them. Yeah, th someone said the RMR sisters have a beautiful bond. You can tell. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, follow up question. What is your favorite Hispanic fairy tale? Oh, wow. Um, I, 
I used to um, have this book, and it was the story of uh, um, a quetzal, which okay. is the, a bird. Um, and it just kind of went through the story of how this person, uh, through sacrifice, kind of um, got rewarded by becoming the quetzal with the colors and, and how mm -hmm. really, again, it's colors for <laughs> colors. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it became like you know like that was the reward and like the the red was like um the represented kind of like the the blood and um uh, that had been sacrificed so it it made an impression on me when i was very young and it made an impression on me and i could always just kind of imagine by the way it was described um uh just the the colors and appreciate what the story was trying to um to say, you know, even at that age, I was really, really young when mm -hmm. I saw it. Mm -hmm. What about <laughs> your your favorite Hispanic? Life? My favorite. Uh, you know what? She wrote a book once, and in school, and like won a prize, and I still remember that one. It was called El Pajarito Sin Color, right? Uh -huh. And it, you know, it goes through the story, and I remember the pictures and like all the little details, the little feathers, and the little bird that had no color. Again, color mm -hmm. <laughs> and no color, and you know he was taking like the the the, the plumaje, the, the, the feathers, bird, feathers yeah. from like different different birds, and you end up with this gorgeous bird, you know, with different colors. And I remember like the very last page of her book was like, <clears throat> it's, you know, she drew it and then put on like a bunch of little you know feathers and colors and stuff. It was just gorgeous, and that to me just like has always stayed with me, like this awesome. little this little bird with no 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 color and then finally as it as it grows up it's like all this colorful and just taken from everybody and every experience that you have yeah that's awesome yeah dye that color you need to dye yeah, that. That's right. yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's bringing back memories so probably yeah <laughs> please please like because i want it now okay <laughs> I'm, like, I'm now connected to this i want it okay <laughs> um if you could rewrite the ending of any fairy tale would you oh okay Ooh. Um, I probably make all the like um, the um, female leads more independent at the end. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, you can do it. You can be happy regardless. <laughs> you know, we were watching Sleeping Beauty the other day, like because that's what we do. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> briar rose in the forest right yeah right yeah yeah exactly <laughs> um and do you want to share again what you're bringing to floxy yes i i mean i want to see them again so so we're gonna have the colorways that we had um that we could not present last time yes uh, which is ofrenda uh rio and para neon sunrise yes. and then we're having grillo this time around yes these are new colorways Mirasol and Espectro. Oh, they're so good. I I can't I honestly can't wait for your your vendor session to be completely honest. I was looking I was so looking forward to it last time too, and then you know, unfortunately you were sick and I felt horrible because I was so looking forward to it. Um so hopefully this time around I'll be able to snag some because you yes. were, were high on my list. <laughs> and we've uh, we've been updating our, our website as well, um, so that all of these colorways are available because it we couldn't catch up fast enough, I yeah. think. But now I think we're in a uh, we've like really focused on that. So all of these colorways will be available on our website, and then we have um, a discount as well through awesome. Floxy event. Thank you, um, mm -hmm. thank you, ladies, for joining me and talking thank to you. Um, you guys are in Chicago, right? Next time in Chicago. I'm going to hit you up. Not that I go to school all the time, but <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I make a mental note. I'm like, I need to go meet them in real life. <laughs> oh, awesome. Yeah. We love that. Yeah. Yeah. 
it'll be great. You'll get to meet my sister. I'll get to meet your other sister. It'll be great. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so if you want to join Jax and RMR Yarn Co. on Friday, November 18th, um, their vendor session is from 11.30 a.m. to 12 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. To get tickets, head over to the link in our bio or go to floxy.com. Remember, when you buy a class or a class package, you automatically get access to all the demos and vendor sessions. And um, if you also record, get the recorded add-on, you'll have access to both vendor and demo sessions for two weeks after the event. And so we will see you at Floxy's Enchanted Fairy Tale Forest virtual event on November 17th through 18th, um, which is a Thursday and a Friday, which is happening already next week. Can you believe it? Oh yes. my gosh. Yeah, we're excited. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be so great. I'm so excited to see you guys um, there. And I hope everybody can come and join us. And we will see you in the next one, guys. All right. Sounds great. great. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for your time, and we appreciate you watching this video. To learn more, visit Floxy.com.